This is George Dion of the Rock is George podcast, and this is a KNAC.com exclusive interview with frontman Des Fafara of the heavy metal act Devil Driver. If I knew absolutely nothing about Devil Driver, how would you describe the band's music to me? Well, we're a groove metal band, which means we're heavy. We've got groove, make you bounce up and down, but we've also, uh, you know, lyrically, I'm not as distorted as a lot of metal singers, so you can understand uh, what's going on lyrically. And I think, you know, we've got great musicians in this band as well. On May 12th, you're releasing Dealing With Demons vol- Volume 2 through Napalm Records. This is the sequel to Volume 1 that came out in 2020. Uh, were you originally planning to release these closer together and the pandemic got in the way? I was. These records were meant to be re- uh, released one and uh you know one year apart but things did get in the way what's great is when we released in 2020 i knew people needed music because everyone was locked away that was the time when it was probably the most poignant time to give people tunes and uh that record came out number three over the course of the year which was fantastic uh for us and then in late 2021 i contracted covid which left me to a place where in 2022 I had to take off for my health, get, get back at it before I could tour. And this is why we're releasing this year. Uh, just to take a brief detour, how you doing from COVID recovery? I myself had long COVID for a while. It took me a long time to get back to normal. Right. Thank you for asking. Uh, it almost killed me. I was saying goodbye to my family. Uh, it left me with heart palpitations and some some heart issues. It took me about eight months. I was living downstairs in my uh, in my living room. I couldn't even navigate my stairs. I couldn't even walk across the street to get my mail. I went from that to eventually, after about 13, 14 months, being able to run on a treadmill and, and get myself back into it. Um, yeah, it was a very scary time for me and the family. But thank you for asking. Glad that you made it, man. I I, I know on my end too. I, I hope was low, and I'm glad that you know you were able to push through as well. I appreciate it. I mean, there's a lot of people who lost a lot of people around the world, and so my my heart and prayers go out to them. And uh, just God did not have that plan for me <laughs> at that time. Uh, Dealing with demons, volume two is a concept album. Is it conceptual in the way that it continues the story of volume one, or is volume two another chapter? It is. Volume one and volume two are actually so short as records uh, by themselves. They're meant to be listening to together. And the dealing with demons theme is actually exactly that. Everybody faces the same demons. It doesn't matter if you're a grocery store worker or a singer in a band, right? We all face like we want to get sober. We face uh, the the people in our in our lives that stab us in the back. We uh, the people in business that that the misdoings, misgivings that go on around our lives. These are the demons that we face. And I wanted to really put it down in two volumes uh, for people to, to kind of grasp and they're meant to be listened to together. You've released a couple of songs ahead of the album. One of them is through the depths. Uh, Do you want to talk a little bit about what this song is about? Or are you one of those uh, artists that prefer the listener make up their own mind? No, I mean, look, this song is really about facing your own mortality (laughs) and, and having uh, a deal with the spiritual side and, and wondering wondering about life you know ha- have i have i been here have i done the right things around people around me uh what happens uh when we part this world so you can read into this song many things but that's in general what it's about and about how there's also a beast within all of us that we've got to maintain and keep control of so in the video if you watch it uh we all turn into certain characters uh you know one is a pig and one is a goat and one is a, and it's and it's meant to kind of kind of take you along those lines of hey we can all turn into the beast but we've got to we've got to watch ourselves down here on this plane now the song you have out if blood is life one of my favorite songs from the album Uh, this is sort of like continuing the thought that you that you know live now while the Uh, you know time is fleeting absolutely i mean the chorus is a huge open chorus i'm it's very rare for me to do this kind of a chorus you know time and uh, it's here for the taking time and yes it's about that it's about live here live now i think if you live too much in the past you don't think about your, your future if you live too much in the future you're not thinking about the here and now there is a a time in your life which should be right now that you're living in the here and now um, and, and stop trying to reflect so far back or worrying so far in the future because you're missing the point. And this breath 
uh, this lunch today, this hello from your significant other, uh, your cat running up on you, like enjoy the moment and enjoy where you're at in life at this very time. Are you planning another single release or video from the album? We are. We're planning another release uh, called This Relationship is Broken or This Relationship Broken, rather. And it's coming out uh, right before we release the record, which oddly enough is my birthday, May 12th. So <laughs> I'm thinking this is going to be some good luck here. <laughs> Even more oddly, it's my birthday as well. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? <laughs> this is fantastic. Fellow fellow Tauruses celebrate. Yeah, man. Awesome. Happy birthday to you. Uh, well in advance. <laughs> Same to you, man. Uh, wives nervously laughing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My, my wife who lives with a Taurus is like, and the wives nervously laughing in the background. <laughs> well, even, even worse for me, my wife is a Taurus. She was born on May 7th. So you can imagine the fights. There you go. Yeah. You... <laughs> yeah. Don't start that. I could go there. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's fantastic. I love it. Yeah, man. So happy, happy birthday way ahead of time for you. And I'm hoping that this record, you know, come out to it's already come out to a lot of really cool fanfare, man. You know, we've had some great things said about it. And uh, I'm, I, it's been sitting in the can for so long that I just cannot wait to bring it out. The, the second volume is, I think, much better than the first. However, you you know, you could probably agree with me that when when bands go and try to do double records, any kind of a double album, usually the second record is full of B-sides and leftovers, and we certainly did not want that. So this thing is all killer, all filler, and that is why they only clock in at 38, 39 minutes is because they're actually made to be listened to together, and I think people are going to really love this record. Have you considered uh, eventually packaging them together down the road? Maybe as a yes, song. we've had talks about that, but for now, you know, it's got to come out as a single release, and I'm sure down the line we'll put them together. Um, I've got ideas around marketing and stuff around that, but I mean, I tend to not look back, so that's going to be a hard one. I mean, I'm already writing for the next record. I'm already two or three songs deep for the next record, so you know, I tend to not look back, uh, and that that's in general in my career. I've had a lot of interviews in the last couple of weeks, as you can imagine, and people will ask me, you know, well. How come you didn't stop here or how come you didn't do this there? And I said, because I really don't look back. It's just not not the way I work. I, you know, I, I tend to be in the moment. And if I've got to look forward, then I look, you know, only only right over the barrier. <laughs> so that's how I call it. <laughs> then you're not going to like my look back question that's coming up. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> we're, we'll get there in a minute. <laughs> OK, the album was produced and engineered by Steve Evitz. Is there something that he brings to the table that you put that trust in him? He is, man. This guy's just, uh, he can do it all. He he's works with a lot of different kind of bands. He's not just a metal guy. And I think that's what we need. You know, in heavy metal, a lot of bands have to treat their brand like Coca-Cola. They can't make a lot of changes within their brand because people will leave it. If you try to introduce new Coke, people bail. We've never been held to that fire uh, in, in Devil Driver. We're, we're kind of allowed to jump around and do different things and, and, uh, you know, different kinds of songs. I mean, like the song Wishing on volume one has some clean vocals. It's a uh, uh, reminiscent, very reminiscent of Bauhaus and Sisters of Mercy and, and, you know, the goth stuff that I grew up on, but also has rock roots in it. And we're just, you know, we're our, our fans enable us to do that. Right. So I think it's essential to kind of look out of the box within a brand, do do your best towards it, you know, and then and then try to work for the future. You just wrapped up the first leg of the Double Trouble live tour with Cradle of Filth. Was this your first tour after the lockdowns? First tour after the lockdowns, first tour in three years, which I haven't had three years off since 1994. And it was absolutely incredible. I mean, not only do we, we have a huge management company here. My wife is a CEO called the Oracle Management. We manage a lot of bands. Uh, uh, Ginger, Cradle of Filth, Exodus, Devil Driver, Cold Chamber, Wednesday 13. I could go on for days. But we manage Cradle. And Danny and I have been fans uh, or fans of each other's work and friends since the early 90s. And we've never toured together. So we were like, look, let's step out together. And it was fantastic. I think there was only three or four nights that didn't sell out. And even at that time, I was looking sideways at the at the promoter like, come on, this looks sold out to me. So it was fantastic uh, returning. It was a short run. And we're looking forward to a second and possible third leg as well. 
We're going to do the looking back question now. It's been 20 years since the first Devil Driver album. I was going to ask if you're going to do anything special to celebrate, but I have a feeling you're not. <laughs> you know what? Uh, I really don't. I just not that guy, you know? Uh, it's just, I don't know. Look, how do I say this? Most bands get a four to seven year career. If you even get a career at all and you get four years, two records, be stoked, be happy. If you get seven years and five records and you've traveled the world, feel like you've just won the lottery. But if you get, like I said, I've been around from Coal Chamber since 1994 up till now, and you get 10 records in with Devil Driver over 20 years with Devil Driver, it's a miracle given to you, right? You should be grateful, humbled, appreciative uh, of every moment that that brings you. And then that's another reason why I don't look back because I want to keep moving forward with the devil driver sound, keep putting out records and hopefully, you know, hopefully I've got another 10 years in me and hopefully the fans will have us for that length of time because I'm, we're enjoying it and the bands had some great success over the years. So I'm appreciative to anybody who's ever bought a ticket, bought a record, bought a, you know, bought a t-shirt or come, sh you know, give me a handshake outside the bus. I mean, it's a, uh, it's a miracle, you know, when, th when this kind of a thing can happen. So your birthday weekend this year tends to be a busy one. You have the release of dealing with demons volume two, you have your birthday, of course. And then you have a show with cold chamber at the sick new world festival. I do getting to play with system and corn, our old friends. And uh, uh, obviously a lot of people from the nineties, um, we're excited to get that call. I'm excited to do that show. Uh, Cold Chamber got back together because when I was on my deathbed with COVID, my wife actually called them and said, hey, we don't know if Des is going to make it through. You should probably call and say hello. And they did. And they ended up checking on me daily for almost a year before someone mentioned, hey, do you want to do a show? And so so the, the camp within the camp, the energy is great. I, I mean, better than great. Um and getting ready to do that show is going to be huge in Vegas. So I'm very excited. And and right on my birthday weekend, right on the release of Dealing with Demons as well. It's like, it's just a kind of perfect setup, man. Is there a chance at future shows with Cold Chamber or maybe some new music? Well, we are doing a tour in July and August, an amphitheater tour with Mudvayne, who I'm sure everybody knows as well. And uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a good time. And there's a bunch of other bands on that. I think Core, um, Nonpoint, Butcher Babies, uh, but, but we're main support to Mudvayne and, you know, amphitheaters all summer long is not going to suck. It's going to be a good time. Are you planning a follow-up to Outlaws till the end volume one? I'd love to, but that record almost drained me. Really? <laughs> I mean, both mentally, physically, and, and monetarily. So for people who don't know, Outlaws till the end is an outlaw cover country record done heavy metal style the first really of its kind by devil driver and i was told early on that man you shouldn't do this you know you're going to ruin your career if you go cover you know whiskey river by willie nelson if you cover a johnny cash song heavy like this is not going to be good for your brand but i had a vision for it right so we have randy from lamb of god leaving from fear john carter cash johnny's son hank three uh, a lot of guys from heavy metal, uh, Wednesday 13, like a lot of guys from metal and a lot of guys from, from outlaw country on that record. And that thing came out, it charted high. It did well and proves the point with any kind of art, whether you're a painter or you're, you know, a musician, do what you do from your heart, do what you do for yourself. And I happen to love that real outlaw country stuff. I think the lyrics are real visceral. I mean, they're heavier than heavy metal at times, to be honest with you. So uh, doing that record was a great time. Took a lot of energy out of me. I actually put a lot of my own money into that record to, to get it done. So a volume two, if it comes along, we'll have to come with some certain circumstances. <laughs> but we'll, we'll see. I mean, I long to do it. That's for sure. I had the best time of my life. Uh, working with all the musicians that I just forementioned right there. I mean, just going to, to uh, the Cash Cabin uh, out in outside in Henderson, outside of Nashville, working with John Carter Cash and getting to sign the mantle that Johnny Cash built over the fireplace, signed it right next to Willie Nelson and Black Sharpie, getting to sing a song in the booth where, where Johnny recorded and to work with John Carter, who's like the nicest guy and talented as all hell. That for me was the kind of... Uh, the kind of things that I chase within this business, right? It's like 
going to certain places, working with certain people, having those certain kinds of experiences. I'm not really a guy who's chasing the nightlife, chasing the money at this point in my life. I could have retired a long time ago. I'm chasing things like that. And, you know, working with leaving from fear, uh, I grew up on punk rock and psychobilly and goth way more than I did metal. I actually got into metal because I found Motorhead and thought they were a punk band until I saw they were all long hair and this and that. And that led me down the road of getting into heavy metal. So that record was interesting, Outlaws Till the End. And, you know, for, for the fans that don't know, you know, go take a listen. Go to Spotify. Go take a listen. There's a ton of guests on it. And it's a heavy, heavy ass record for sure. But I mean, Whiskey River from Willie Nelson has never sound better than me and Randy from Lamb of God on it. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever think of making that crossover into movies, much like Lee Ving has? You know, for those who don't know, my father uh, was a child actor. I wasn't raised with him, um, but my dad was uh, Tui on Leave it to Beaver. And my uncle was Whitey on Leave it to Beaver. And my dad has a long IMDb uh, of, of, of actors and, and things that he's done. Yes. I have thought about going into it. Uh, my wife has talked to a few acting agents and, uh, we'll see. I'd, I'd, I would like to, to be in a Western, to be honest with you, uh, you know, dirty and blacken my teeth up and give me a shotgun and a black hat and put me on a horse. Like I'm in, you know, I'll do it for free at this point. You wouldn't want to do something wholesome, like leave it to beaver. Come on. <laughs> it's pretty strange, right? I mean, a, a great story from that is when Cole Chamber did the Fiend video, we were on the Universal lot filming at the Munsters garage. That was where we filmed that video for Fiend. And um, the house that they gave us that day to do our makeup and all this stuff to get ready to be on film was, was the Leave it to Beaver house, man. So I spent my whole day in there with a team where my father had spent his youth you know, probably one of the most, if not the most iconic show in American history, uh, next to maybe even the Brady Bunch, let's say. Right. So, yeah, just some real strange coincidences. Um, even when I moved out here, I live in the IE. I live out in Marietta area. Uh, I found out my father lived like four miles from me. So we've ended up uh, to be close friends and and it's wonderful to to get close with him again. And so, yeah, the acting bug is definitely within me. I just have to have the time and I'm also very private. I'm a complete recluse. So that kind of thing is it's, it's hard for me, you know, you know, obviously, you know, that, that, that recluse aspect uh, kind of helps you with the music. I would think. I think it does for sure. Um, introverts tend to make great art. That's either it's music, painting, sculpture, you name it. And uh, I've just always been that kid. That's not been great in a pack of kids, right? It was, I was never like, can Johnny come over and play? I was always like, Hey mom, tell Johnny to get the hell out of my room, you know, <laughs> send Johnny home. Right. And so I've, I've kept with that, uh, my adult life. And, you know, although it's kept me from doing certain things like, you know, I'm sorry, I missed the Grammy party, but I don't really feel like socializing or sorry, I missed, you know, the wedding, but sorry, it's kind of weird for me to come. There's going to be hundreds of people there. And, you know, and it's just an introvert thing. And I think, you know, my wife of, of almost 25 years has had to deal with it and she's kind of, uh, you know, she works with it. You know what I mean? Those are all the questions I have for you today. Des, the new album, Dealing with Demons, Volume 2 by Devil Driver is out May 12th through Napalm Records. Uh, great album. I enjoyed it. And it sounds like you're living your best life, man. Keep it up. Thank you, man. I appreciate you. And look, I grew up on KNAC, man. You know, so, you know, <laughs> I remember the first time I ever came into the KNAC studio was with Fear Factory back in the early 90s. So I appreciate you guys giving us some support, man. And you've been there for a long time. Uh, in my life so you know just just thanks for that and to all the listeners you know enjoy the record enjoy your life you never know when the end is coming so go eat that meal today go kiss somebody that you love you know put a smile on your face if you're breathing and uh and enjoy life absolutely and thanks for the kind words and thanks for your time today des no problem brother take care <laughs>